Aloha mai kako. My name is Samantha Decourt. I serve as the chair of the Nanapuli Makili Neighborhood Board, number 36, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Today is October 17th. Chair, can you have a mic so that people on virtual can hear? Yes. I knew something was missing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Today is Tuesday, October 17, 2023. We are meeting in person at the Nanakuli Public Library and virtually on WebEx. We have a full agenda tonight. So to keep our items moving, I will go over some rules of speaking. If anyone wishes to speak, I will ask that in person attendees line up at the microphone, my right, your left. Uh, those joining us on WebEx, please raise your virtual hand. When recognized by the chair, state your name clearly for the minutes. Comments must be kept under two minutes. Officials reports under three minutes and presenters under 10 minutes. Sergeant at Arms will be keeping time, so please end your comments uh, when the timer goes off. I will also ask you to conclude your comments. I would like to remind everyone that this is a community forum, so we welcome all comments, concerns, questions, and even opinions. Be free to share your mana'o on our agendized items, and remember to treat everyone with respect and engage with the, engage with the spirit of aloha. With that, we will be going to our first agendized item uh, on the agenda is uh, Honolulu Fire Department. They're not here yet. So, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, and then also there is an accident close by. So I know that there are still some people that are on their way to attend. So uh, if you're joining us online, please drive safe. We will see you when you get here. And we'll go ahead and move over to Honolulu Police Department. So go ahead, Corporal Pagan. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, board members, members of the community, Corporal Pagan with the Honolulu Police Department, District 8 CBT. I have your stats for September. Uh, in September, we had 22 motor vehicle thefts, seven in our area, 30 burglaries, four in our area, 130 thefts, 19 in our area, 26 unauthorized entries into a motor vehicle, three in our area. There's a total of 136 citations issued and 7,469 calls for service, uh, 954 in our area. Um, the only thing I did wanna bring up um, is to remind the community that uh, Farrington Highway eastbound at Haleakala, the left turn has been changed to a on green only. It used to be yield on green. Um, it's now, there's a sign now that says left turn on green only. Um, I guess we've got some concerns. Uh, uh, Rep Keela's office called and asked that we bring it up and we try to address it, but we have to let the community know that there has been a traffic change. So please be aware of that. Um, you know, we don't want any more accidents in that area over there. Other than that, I'm open to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, just one more thing. Anybody that's in Eva Beach, um, this weekend, we're going to be having uh, Eki Kapuna ID at the Ever Beach Shopping Center McDonald's, put on by the Ever Beach Lions Club, and we're also going to be having at the City and County Transportation Yard in Waianae on Saturday from 10 to 3. There's going to be a, a gun buyback program, so you can come down, drop off any firearms that you have that you want to get rid of, um, no questions asked. Um, and you can actually receive a gift card from, I believe, Foodland or something like that, depending on the type of weapon you turn in. Uh, it's, it's being run by the Attorney General's office. HB is going to be there to assist with the traffic trolling and stuff like that. But um, the Attorney General's office will be taking care of that. Great. Thank you. Um, I apologize. Can you just say one more time where that traffic change was? Um, Farrington Highway eastbound um, at Haleakala. Yeah, the left turn lane to go up Haleakala, that sign has been changed. Okay, great. Uh, we'll go ahead and move it over to questions. Board members, questions? Board member Myers, and then we'll go over to board member Corona. So go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Aloha. You went to Rep. Keela's town hall. Yes. Okay. Do you remember when Senate uh, House Speaker stated that, you know, like for us on Hawaiian homelands to use certain phone numbers to report drugs or to report uh, game rooms. Yes. Okay. 
I know you guys have a different procedure when it comes to Hawaiian homelands as far as follow through. Is that true? Um, well, it depends on what you mean by follow through. Okay. Um, if you're talking about taking the property, trying to seize the property, yes. Because um, the way, just for people to understand, when, when there's a lot of complaints at a house for either drugs or gambling and stuff like that, eventually what happens is our, our officers and our department will go and uh, meet with the federal government to do a nuisance abatement type of case, which is an a, attempt to actually seize the property. Because the property technically does not belong to the leasee, um, we can't do that because otherwise we got to take the land, we got to take the property from DHHL. So that's why they won't do that. But as far as investigating, uh, 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 actually entering the game room, doing their investigation and actually raiding the game room, it's no different than anywhere else. Okay, is it possible for HPD to add a procedure that I believe is missing in that when you do say do a bus or you know investigating a Hawaiian homestead property that has a game room such as the one on Keolana, from my understanding, the beneficiaries had to inform the department. Is it possible for HPD to have a procedure in there where you in HPD informs the department of any type of illegal drugs or um, gambling going on on Hawaiian homelands? properties um i can't make the decision i can let them know that there is a concern um so you're saying right now if if it was your home you have to call dhhl to let them no. know what happened or so like say when you guys are bust the one at keolana when you guys are dealing with the keolana incidents when um beneficiaries called or lessees called hpd nobody informed hpd didn't inform hawaiian homelands that they were having these issues on the on the land Instead, uh, Pastor Allen and others in like the security watch group had to inform them. And then it was like, oh, we lost the report, this and that. So how can we close the gap where if there's drug or gambling on DHHL land that a, that a neighborhood watch or a citizen doesn't have to go tell DHHL, but you guys send them in the copy of the report and said, FYI, this is what's going on at this homestead lot. Yeah, I can ask them about that. And if you get back to me next meeting, and then if there's an, a, another way of getting that in, uh, procedure to be incorporated, if it's not, you know, if there's resistance. Okay. Mahalo. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Board member Corona. Uh, yes, thank you. Am I good? Um, just two quick questions. I always seem to forget um, on the, uh, the, 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 the crime statistics. Of, I'll use September as an example. You have 22 written up there. Is 22 for the entire coast, or is it just, is that or is that island wide? 22 for the district. The district itself, yep. and on in and specifically seven in our specific. Yeah, in our area, area that we consider. Okay. This area. All right, and then uh, the the last question I had is if 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 the if HPD is consistently called to a specific resident um, over an extended period of time, um, and what does HPD do when they're consistently called to the same residence? And then is there any way to escalate that? Or is it just as long as they, um, they, they respond to the call, address the call, and then move, move on to something else? And then it happens again and again and again. What, what, what is there? Is there a process or uh, is there escalation? Okay. As of right now, if someone say someone calls about a noise complaint at a house, um, Really, it, it's the officer's discretion what they do at that time. They can go there, talk to the owner and say, hey, keep the noise down and they leave. Um, if the officer gets called back again because there's a noise complaint, again, it's up to him. If he does keep it down, and he leaves. Um, I believe most of our officers won't keep coming back for that type of complaint. They'll do something, they'll write a writer report, cite somebody if there's, there's a, a credible violation. Um, if someone keeps getting citations for a noise complaint every day or every week and stuff like that, Unfortunately, we don't have a process where we can say, well, we got called five times to your house, so now we're going to arrest you because we got five times. If it's a violation, say for noise complaints, if it's a violation, it's a violation. It doesn't matter if it's 10 violations for the same thing. So if it's, if it's something like that, then, it's, then that's kind of how it goes. If it's a criminal matter, kind of goes the same way. You know, we, we keep making the report and there's going to be, say, five reports of illegal gambling there, but it's not 
okay, you did five now, so it goes from a petty misdemeanor to a felony. If that's what you want. Right. So, so essentially, it's just it's it's the document the documentation trail for the prosecuting portion of it. But so that okay. Yes. Thank you. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, community, any questions for Honolulu Police Department? Uh, please come up to the microphone and uh, please state your name for the minutes. Connie Victor. Um, so I have to call the police this month because, like, the, so it's hard to explain, but uh, my neighbor's house got broken into, and then I had to kick out other people. That came on my property. And then they keep coming into our neighborhood. And all you guys are writing them down else was an argument. Like I put no trespassing signs and that doesn't work. What happens after that? Uh, are they are they trespassing on your property or are they just in the neighborhood? My my neighborhood is probably poor than Okay, and they all they all made trespassing reports against these people. One is a vacation. The crime was in the house. Okay. Okay, so in, in regards to people trespassing on their property, if you have an actual trespass warning that's issued to the individual, then if they come back, we can arrest them. However, Well, if so, will you argue with the guy at the time? Do that? Okay. Okay. And did you tell him you wanted the guy trespassed? Yeah. Okay. Okay. If if the guy comes back, you can actually have him trespass. Tell him you want to trespass the guy from your property because he keeps coming back. Unfortunately, you cannot have the person trespass from your neighbor's property. That neighbor has to trespass them. So if they're yeah, no, but that's, that's, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, you can call and say that he was trespassed from yours and he's, he's there. So you, you can call, but then again, it, depending on the circumstances of what the homeowner says, it kind of determines what we can do. Because if the person's in the property inside the house, they can make a burglary report or an unauthorized entry to a dwelling. Um, but they have to make that report. You can't make it. So they can do it over the phone and, and stuff. We can verify it, stuff like that. So we can do it that way and we can arrest them for that. But unfortunately, if you see them, you kind of call and then we'll make the arrest. We can go there and get the guy out the property and identify him. And if the person comes back later and says, hey, something was missing from my garage, this person was there, then we can make the burglary, we can reclassify it as a burglary case. But each homeowner has to call for that. Once you do a trespassing case for that individual, if he's on your property, he can be arrested any time he comes back. So I got the phone and you you can call and we'll go there and get them off. But we'll try to verify that they're not supposed to be able to get them off the property. But we cannot actually arrest them unless your neighbor makes a complaint. Okay. So again, it could be by the phone or they can make a even if they come back later. And they make a complaint saying based on the fact that you had the picture of the guy, this guy wasn't authorized to be there and stuff like that. Huh? Yeah, so they, they can do that. If they're willing to make the report, they can call it. We'll, we can use that. You, they're going to need a statement from you about how the video was obtained and photos or whatever. But that can be added to the report, but they have to actually make the complaint. Because if it goes to court, being that they're the ones that were the victim, they have to go to court. It's not going to be you because technically you don't lose anything in that case. And how do we report sex trafficking? Um, you can call 529-3101. Um, that's a narcotics uh, hotline. You can report it to them. Um, I'll talk to you later and I'll get some more information. Okay, okay. very good. Thank you. Any other questions, community members? Uh, anybody online? Seeing none, we are going to go ahead and uh, move forward to uh, community concerns. Uh, Honolulu Police Department, thank you so much. Sergeant Fumi, thank you. Corporal Pagan, thank you. Uh, so, community concerns, uh, anyone? In the room, uh, community concerns, please go up to the microphone. State your name for the minutes, please. Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, and community members. Hello, Mr. Maine. Um, my name is Elizabeth Dixon, and I am here to announce something very special. Last September, a group of us women joined Play Builders, and we collected stories, and we put together a play 
for caregivers, by caregivers, about caregivers, and we're talking about from Alzheimer's, cancer, it doesn't matter. And we have a show coming up called the Super Executive Aunties of the Malama the Caregivers Collective. Yes, I know it's a mouthful. Um, you've probably seen news stories on it, how we had the script, we had no place to play. Well, we finally have a place to play. Um, we have six shows coming up. I have some flyers. Three are going to be at the Hawaiian Mission Houses Historic Site and Archives. The next three will be at the Actors Group. And I also am here to announce that on January 5th and 6th, we will be at the Nanakuli High and Intermediate doing two shows, and they will be free admission. The ones that will be downtown, tickets will be $25 for adults, $15 for students. So, and we have 200 seats available at the Mission House, 63 seats at the Actors Group. And from what I was told, tickets are already going fast. So, this is something, there are three of us actually that are in this play that are from the YNI Coast. Everybody else is not. So, I was picked to come here tonight. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Elizabeth. Um, community, any other concerns? Anyone? Anyone? Elizabeth, please tell your son we said hi and we missed him today. I so. sure will. And he won't be here <laughs> next month because one of the, your guys' next meeting will be my second play show the day after our birthday. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, members in the room, any community concerns? Uh, anyone on virtual community concerns? You can go ahead and raise your virtual hand. If not, we will move on. Okay. My apologies, uh, attendees and board members. I missed a very important part of our agenda. I missed the pule. So uh, if you don't mind, we're gonna go ahead and take a really quick minute and we're gonna pray, we're gonna bless the night. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we as a community and our leaders and those that represent our community have come together to serve the better interests of the people that live in the 96792. Father, I just lift up Nanakuli and Ma'ili to you and I just thank you, Lord, that the frustration, Father God, that has continued to harbor our, 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 our thoughts and our spirits, Lord Jesus, that there will be security, Father God, with the solutions that are discussed in this room, the action that is carried out, and all of us coming together in unity, Father. I pray over the accident that had happened earlier. I pray that everyone is okay. Everyone gets to their destination safely. Please continue the to bless the rest of this night in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, I feel better. You feel better, Jeffrey? <laughs> okay, very good. All right, moving on uh, to new business. You know, I was so honored and blessed that, you know, um, uh, this year, uh, you know, our, our, complex area teacher of the year and i'm so honored anytime you know we have somebody to represent our moku uh, in just such a positive way such a good light and i was honored to participate uh in the 2024 teacher of the year award ceremony um uh, with uh, governor green and the rest of the elected officials now uh tell me donna how many uh department of education teachers are there overall hundreds hmm? Wow, 13,000 Department of Education teachers. Now, the reason that I asked that is because out of that 13,000, there were 16 public school teachers that were selected, 15 to represent our complex area teacher of the year, uh, and then also one to represent the charter schools. Uh, so I'm very honored today uh, uh, that Ms. Soriano, uh, who actually uh, is a teacher at Waianae Elementary, that she was awarded to represent Waianae and Nanakuli and, uh, as our Complex Area Teacher of the Year. Um, and we have a little something for her. I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, uh, Councilmember Tupola if she could uh, go to the microphone and share. 
Sure. So on behalf of the city council, we want to recognize Ms. Donna Soriano, 2024 Teacher of the Year for the Nanakuli Wai'anae Complex area. Ms. Donna Soriano's dream to become an educator was influenced by the positive impact her teachers made at her in a young age. She's not only pioneered the STEM program, but passionately teaches over 450 students ranging from pre-K to sixth grade. She's a nationally board certified teacher, recipient of prestigious honors, including Armed Forces Communications and Electronic Association, Hawaii STEM Grant Award, Hawaii Bowl and Teach for America Extra Year for Teacher Innovation Grant, Hawaii Education Association Ronald K. Thomas Scholarship Award for Professional Development, National Science Foundation Presidential Awards for Excellence in Mathematics, Science, and Teaching. Whereas Ms. Soriano serves as a mentor both to teachers at the Hawaii Department of Education and pre service teachers at University of Hawaii. She's led numerous enrichment programs, including Summer STEM Labs, Lego and Vex IX Robotics, Malama Club, Girls on the Run, Girl Scouts, Seahorse Media, Seahorse Design Lab. She most recently started Hui Ehehana providing students with opportunities for hands-on learning and personal growth. The Honolulu City Council, as well as this neighborhood board, honors her on being named the 2024 Teacher of the Year for the complex, and the entire City Council, including the mayor, is very proud of you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, this is so great. Thank you so much. Yes. Ms. Soriano, if you wouldn't mind going to the microphone, I think our board would like to share our personal sentiments uh, to you and the investment that you have continued to make uh, for our keiki. So uh, board members, any questions, remarks, sentiments that you would like to share with Ms. Soriano? Go ahead, board member right. Corona. Congratulations uh, completely. Um, I, I know uh, from experience, the uh, it, it, teaching is difficult. And uh, it requires a lot of dedication, and it's evident that you're doing that. So I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm sure that the kids and the cake you are really benefiting from it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Board Member Corona. Board Member Myers? Thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations, and thank you for you know, feeding into our community, into the cake of our community. We hope that you'll be getting white hair and growing old in our, in our moku, in Wainai moku. And this just shows that you have invested a lot of um, heart into the children by having getting this award. You've done a lot of things. You've done a lot of things, and I, you know, can continue to do those things and um, come and visit us once in a while on the neighborhood board if you have any types of issues along the Waianae Coast that you would like us to take heart to. Mahalo. Definitely. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Uh, board members, any other comments, sentiments? We'll open it up to the community. Anything that anyone wants to share? Uh, so before you share, uh, again, Ms. Soriano, you know, there are so many good things that come out of our moku. There are so many people that are making such a positive difference here on the Waianae Coast. Uh, and I mahalo you very much for the commitment that you continue to make uh, for our keiki and being that positive role model. They didn't have STEM class when I was going to school. I don't even know what STEM is, but it sounds really intelligent. So thank you very much for being that advocate, you know, for our, our keiki and our next generation. Uh, the Nanakuli, Waianae, uh, Nanakuli Maili Neighborhood Board, we're here for you. We're here to help you and to support you. So please come to us if there's anything that we can do uh, to further support your cause. Go ahead, Board Member Tector. Hi, um, with the 11 uh, schools in our district and the impact that they're having to be challenged with, uh, traffic, um, you know, homelessness, you pioneer children that, you know, they're resilient, but with teachers like you, we so appreciate you and I have to commend you. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you, board member Tector. And perfect timing, we have Representative Keela who just walked in. So Representative Keela, if you would like to share some sentiments, you can go to the microphone. <laughs> I know it was traffic getting in here. so. So sorry, there was an accident in Series 7, so forgive me. Look, this is not necessarily a kuleana, this area, but every time that we get to honor our teachers, I think we should take every chance to do so. So I'll save you folks the writing of it all. But we just acknowledge that, Miss Donna, you have dedicated yourself 
to addressing both diverse epistemology and pedagogical excellence while encouraging your students to grow as learners, not just here in our coastline, but throughout the state of Hawaii. And your well engaged community leaders are truly grateful for all that you do. So be acknowledged by the 32nd legislature. We congratulate you for being the 2024 Teacher of the Year for the Nanakuli YNI Complex. Awesome. Running out of hands. <laughs> uh, I just want to say thank you so very much to the council. Okay, wait, hold, hold on. Let's just pause. He, we're going to take a picture really quick. We're, we're, we are going to recess uh, for a picture as well. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Miss Soriano. Just to keep it short and sweet, I just wanted to extend my deepest gratitude to the council and everyone here. Uh, teaching in YNI has allowed me to make a difference in the lives of our future leaders and contribute to the growth and prosperity of our extraordinary community. I am so grateful to be able to wake up and do something that I love every single day in the community that inspires me every single day. I love providing these programs and these opportunities for our students because honestly, they teach me just as much as I teach them. And I was talking, sorry, with Ms. Jermaine here, and I told her that Waianae is where I first started my career, and that's where I'm going to retire. <laughs> I moved out here to be closer to my students and to be closer to the Ohana and the community. And so thank you so very much. These, these, these awards, there, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. So stay right there. Uh, board members, uh, we are going to recess really quick for a picture. I apologize, the microphone. Uh, I apologize. We're going to be moving on to uh, our next agenda is item Bill 57 relating to game rooms and Bill 58 relating to authorized personnel introduced by Council Member Andrea Tupola. I'll go ahead and have her, uh, you have the floor, Council Thank Member. Thank you so much. So, uh, board members, I gave everyone a folder. So if you can take out the folder, I'm just going to refer to this one pager. So I did bring a copy of the bill and it's in the folder, but I kind of summarized it in a one pager. So it's a little easier to understand, but by all means, you can look through the entire bill if you want. And I have copies here if people need that. So bill 57 is adding gambling to a nuisance. So for those who don't know, 
The definition of nuisance in the law is anything that unlawfully hurts, inconveniences, or damages. Now, when you think of a nuisance, you think of maybe something severe, but there are nuisances in the revised ordinances of Honolulu that even just cover garbage and trash and weeds. So nuisance is anything that really can hurt or harm others. So I gave a few examples. For example, in chapter 16A, substandard buildings are nuisances and they fine people for that. ROH 40-7, it defines weed and trash that goes into the sidewalks and other people's properties as nuisances. And it instructs people to remove it or gives the city and county the authorization to remove it. So those are just examples. So it's suggesting that we add game rooms as a public nuisance. Owners of the property would be giving a notice of violation and time to correct the violation. They're fined $1,000 if they don't correct it by the time they were given, and then $1,000 every day until the nuisance ceases. So if we can, you know, I, I know board member Myers brought up one, but you know, the one that we had behind Food Giant, that's next to a elderly home. It's a nuisance because of the activity that happens on the street, one the noise that it makes, the and the crime that it brings by the elderly home. So we decided that this would be a good way for us to actually categorize this activity and also try to work with the property owner and not just the person running the game room. In the past, actually right now still, gambling can only be prosecuted to the person running the gambling. So Hi, if that, someone is uh, logging in, can you turn on your turn off your volume? That's the stronger one. If you're going to use it for wash the truck, like how I do when I spray. Okay, hold on, squat. please. Sorry. Got it? Okay, very good. Please proceed. Sorry. No, it's okay. And so right now, if there is a gambling offense, because we have no game room offenses, just gambling offenses. It only targets people who are gambling. So not the property owner, not the people who are leasing or renting to the game room uh, operation. So bill 58, it's called relating to authorized personnel. So I included there the definition of two things that are already in the law. So these are not new definitions already existing in the law. It says authorized personnel is any officer or inspector who has been designated by the building official and deputized by the chief of police as a special officer. So right now, police officers can be deputized to enforce building, housing, and permitting codes. It currently doesn't happen that way, but I'm just letting you know that that definition exists. The next definition is responsible persons. This also already exists in the law. Any property owner, tenant, or person with an interest in real property. So what Bill 58 does is two things. It allows authorized personnel to give evidence or share surveillance with DPP. So currently right now, the way the city does it is only a city inspector can try to determine if something illegal is happening, of which many of these operations already have extensive surveillance on it, but HPD is not allowed to share that to basically start a notice of violation. The second thing, is that it changes all references of the violator to responsible persons. So unfortunately, right now in the law, it says party responsible and it's not defined. And so every time something happens, it's always the tenant and never the landlord. So council member Dos Santos, Tam and myself, our hope and intent was that we actually work with landlords and ask them to be responsible community members to have legal businesses in their, their buildings and to stop nuisances and crimes. So these two bills were introduced a, like a month ago and we're waiting to get a hearing for it and it got referred to the zoning committee because actually both of these bills touch the housing, building, and permitting code of the city. So chapter 16 is the building code and that's for Bill 58. Chapter 16A is the housing code. And then chapter 18 is the permitting code. So just real quickly, I'll break down for you how Bill 58 works. There's three ways that you can enforce. Notice of violation, criminal prosecution, and administrative order. So again, this doesn't create new laws. There's no new fines. 
It just allows in the first NOV and the administrative order for a police officer to give evidence to DPP for them to issue the notice of violation. That's it. So we're hoping that by being able to do that, that many of these operations that are illegally happening in residential zones. So first off, gaming is not allowed in a residential zone. It actually says that in the law. Coin operated and gaming machines are considered commercial activity and it's not allowed in a private residential area. So we could possibly start to issue fines, but we've never been able to because we've never been able to kind of prove it using surveillance or video evidence from HPD. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna open up for questions and people from the community can ask questions. Our most recent count is 16 game rooms in Wyandotte. When we had the town hall in July with the chief and with um, prosecutor Alm, we had 25. So narcotics has been working hard to decrease it, but we do need that step forward with DHHL. This doesn't alleviate the DHHL problem, but we do hope to have a solution as DHHL is working on an MOU with the city. And that MOU should be done by December 5th when we have the follow-up town hall. So um, Stacey Lynn Eli that works for DHHL is running point on that. And I'm hoping that that can be finished so that it's real nice and clear what can and can't happen so that there's no problems with enforcement on homestead land. Great, thank you, Council Member Tupola. Board member questions, board member Myers, uh, board member Corona. Thank you, Chair. Um, myself, I know previous Chair Patty Teruya and uh, Mana, we all came to support this bill. Um, and, I, and I think what's really important is that I remember uh, hearing that there was testimony about um, some community members worried about losing their uh, privacy or their uh, landowner privacy rights. And I think what is important is that um, when your privacy hinges on public safety, then that is a concern. Because I think the laws are created for those that would like to have public safety and wouldn't want to have these things in their communities. Um, one person had brought up in the testimony that I thought it was, I, it just was like light bulb. When we have these illegal activities like the game rooms, they're evading paying, paying taxes. And so it's important to get IRS involved in it because um, I think IRS would want their money when it comes to commerce. And so we, the, the shared testimony that I heard at um, City Council was that, you know, it, it brings drugs, it brings sex trafficking, prostitution. Um, these are the things, and he, including Mana had shared that, um, and he was somebody on the inside. And so um, I, th I think it's really important that our board uh, support this. Um, Want to hear what some of the other the board members say. But again, the laws, if you're following the law, then that's fine. But if you're not following the law, similar to when HPD tells you to stop, put up your hands where I can see it. And if you don't, that means you're resisting. Um, if you're not doing anything, just put your hands up. Then go to the procedure of showing that you are innocent. And same thing with the landowners. If you're not doing nothing wrong, then HPD should be able to come in and see if something is wrong because Otherwise, you bring drugs, prostitution, sex trafficking of our keiki. Some of them is sex trafficking of our keiki. Um, I used to work for a nonprofit that we used to, uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking was part of uh, the social services that we provided. And it was a reality that illegal game rooms have those things. And so, thank you, Chair. I just wanted thank to thank Board members. Member Meyer for coming to the hearing and just add that no new laws are being introduced in Bill 58, which people had concerns with for private privacy. It's laws on the books, but really no DPP inspector should be going in or will go into an active game room and go undercover because that's not what they do. So we think that this is a safer way for us to be able to do this and still have people abide by the law but not send a DPP inspector into the lion's den and say, hey, can you check out if, it, if this is happening inside there? HPD can share what they know, and then the Department of Planning and Permitting can decide to act on it. Board Member Corona? 
Yes, uh, thank you very much for the information. Um, I, I, uh, I, uh, I look at it as um, kind of a twofold bill. I understand it's already on the books. Um, and I, I, there's just so much stuff happening in our communities with crime that sometimes you got to play a little bit harder to help reduce what's going on out there. So, and I, and I do look at it from the other side that playing, playing devil's advocate, I guess, about infringement on, on, on property rights and, and people's privacy and things like that. So, um, so although I do support it, I asked that it was at its first reading. It's got to go to committee still. So there is some time to put some little tweaks in there. If there's some tweaks that we need to do to, to satisfy those who might, might have concerns about the bill, but there is language that could be put in there that could be tweaked a little bit to give me more reassurances to the, 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 the private homeowner that, hey, we're not really targeting you. We're not looking at you for these special duty officers. We're, we're looking for the bigger picture here and, and reducing the crime in the neighborhoods. So. I just want to ask, there's still op, there's still an opportunities to have the bill modified to help bridge that balance if necessary to get more get garner more support from those that might currently oppose or have concerns with it. Yeah, no, I agree. And to add to your point, if you read the word authorized personnel, it actually says that the officer has to be deputized. This means that not every officer can even do this. In fact, right now we have zero officers deputized to do this. So in the event that this moves forward, HPD would probably pick like one guy because they're not going to deputize a bunch of them. And he probably work in the narcotics division and it would only be associated if they're running an operation and trying to shut down a game room. So I hear what you're saying and I'm open to any edits that you guys might have to submit. I have something to say. Great. Thank you very much. Board member Tektor. Um, this is a very interesting bill that you, you put together and I support it. And as Corona had mentioned a few tweaks, is there like a timeline? Is this, you know, the fine, they're going to get slapped on the wrist and wait for a while and then open up again. Um, it, nuisance is nuisance. It's what comes with nuisance. Are you asking how long people are going to be given to correct the nuisance? Mm -hmm. When I read the bill, it didn't specify amount of days. So I reread it today and I actually thought the same thing that it should give a time frame written in law because it just says the owner will be giving a, a notice that will say how many days you have. So the notice will have it, but so typically in the city, it's 30 days. But if you guys have suggestions on the time frame, I think we can definitely put that into Bill 57. I, I would like to see something in that fashion because when we're given deadlines, we're, we're more apt to respond versus, oh, well, we'll just wait. Another one will open up. I mean, are we encouraging or discouraging? But with a timeline, we can at least, you know, let them know, uh, you know what, you got 30 days. Uh, to six months, you know, if the owner's involved, but they're not here, they don't live here. A lot of people rent on the west side. So yeah, there's a lot of gray areas, but yeah, we can put in the 30 days to you. And I think two things, right? Residential versus commercial game rooms. We're having a hard time with commercial game rooms because a lot of landlords play dumb. We don't know that anything's going on. This is a businessman running a business in here. They literally think they're entrepreneurs. We know, we know it's not the case, but you can't say, no, they're not an entrepreneur. They're like, no, they're paying rent, which they're probably paying five times more than everyone else. And so the residential one is different, right? There has been various game rooms that actually the owners don't even know that that's happening. Illegal squatters, homestead uh, properties that have been left abandoned, right? So. In the event that the people running it don't own the home, that's why we need to start to contact the owner of the home or the owner of the building, because we've already done this thing where we try to um, target the people running the operation. They just pick up and go somewhere else. And then they have all of their assets. They get, because they have so much cash, they just buy all the machines again and start up again. 
Okay, very good. Uh, board members, uh, community, any questions for our council member, please go to the mic. Uh, online, if you would uh, like to give a comment or ask a question, please raise your virtual hands. Uh, introduce yourself for the minutes. Connie Victor. My question is the, the way the law is written, like what they're talking about. Would they be able to say like, oh, you infringed my rights and then get off scot free? Like how people get arrested for DUI, but because the cop pulled them over for something else, they get away with it. So how can we word it so that doesn't happen and that doesn't infringe their rights and that just puts them away? So I get, I guess the hard part here is that DPP can already enter your property. That's actually already written into the law. So if it was infringing on your rights, they would have ripped it out of the law a long time ago. So when a building inspector sees that there's a noticeable violation, which we're talking about game rooms, right? But they've had other ones where it's fire hazards, illegal structures, where things are very dangerous. It says in the law that the building inspector has the right to enter the premise. It's called the right of entry. So the right of entry is granted to them if they think something is possibly a hazard. Like what I brought up with like, um, what is it called? substandard buildings like if you have something that's about to crumble or hurt somebody the city is liable to tell you that hey this needs to come down because this structure is not stable so just to reiterate this is not any new right of entry all of this is already authorized per the law but like i said they've never deputized any officer to do it but that part already exists in the law too but the part of dpp being able to utilize their knowledge or whatever they might know about it. We've never done that before. So DPP has always been on their own. They have to walk in and see it with their own eyes, but DPP is not doing criminal enforcement. So when they walk in, they don't say gambling. That's not what they're about. They're looking for building violations, commercial activity in residential areas, those kind of things. But most of these guys have lookouts. They have people waiting on corners for people to come in and then they quickly shut everything down. So DPP hasn't been too successful in actually visually seeing this happen. So most of the time it just, you know, DPP inspectors don't go out at 1 a.m., 11 p.m. They don't do that. So during the day hours, nothing's happening there. So it's not like the time of the day during a working day is like prime time to start to like find people. This stuff happens in all hours of the nights on the weekends, right after a shooting. So what we're saying is that the evidence for that right of entry doesn't happen during working hours. Cops work 24 seven. They might be able to say, this is the commercial activity happening in a residential area. So I guess maybe I can get something written about that. Because I think people are assuming that all of a sudden this is going to let people into your home when actually, if you do have something dangerous per the law, they're allowed to go. So. Thank you. I have a quick question uh, with regards to deputizing. How long does it take for officers to get deputized? I can ask the chief. The funny part is when I read it, I, I was like, wow, they can do this already. So actually, per the law, this is crazy an officer can come in and arrest you for a building code violation. We've never done that because prosecutors will never prosecute that. So in the history of the city and county of Honolulu, that section called criminal enforcement never has happened. So currently right now, per the law, if, if an officer wanted to go in and was deputized, they could arrest you for a building code violation. But then again, that would have to go to court. It may not be held up. So they just have never done that. So I guess to answer your question, I'm guessing that there's a reason why, because maybe some training would have to be involved, right? On what can and can't happen with building code, um, housing code and permit violations. So we're not having HPD do DPP's job. We're not, we're not turning them into inspectors. We're just allowing them to share with inspectors and then allowing them to have it as a possible nuisance abatement. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, board, should we make a motion? Sorry, I apologize. We have a question online. Okay, uh, Salcedo, I apologize. Uh, please go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Uh -huh. uh, Tapola, you know when um, the HPD do the 
you know, on site and it happened to be the a citation, a violation. Now, as uh, HPD has all the evidence, we also need to make sure that the prosecutor's office is on board with this because there's so much times HPD have gave citation and the prosecutor's office had thrown it out. So that's a big concern to make sure the collaboration goes all around the table. So um, our HPD do not waste their time with the evidence and paperwork just to go to court and the prosecutor just said, ah, it's just gambling and throw it out. You, you know, many of the things that happen and uh, it's not right that HPD is taking the time to uh, give citations and majority of them is not even heard because the prosecutor throws it out, out of court without even being heard. So that's a big concern. So I want to make sure that's in the bill or it has to be amended, making sure that the prosecutors take this very seriously because it is, uh, I always said, uh, a plague on our, you know, district. It's a virus. It's a plague that we can't get rid of if we don't have them prosecuted. So, please. Uh, okay, uh, Mrs. Yeah. Salcedo, I'm going to stop you for a second. It, it, the sound is coming out pretty muffled. I'm not sure if that's on our end. Yeah, because I, I, I can barely make out what you're saying, Councilmember. Got it. She's talking about the fact that if we do things and HPD builds a case and it's never prosecuted, then we're not doing anything. So just to be clear, Bill 57 and Bill 58 do not touch any criminal law. We're talking about civil law. So civil would be fines. Things. So we are in the civil section, which is why prosecutor Alm is not a part of this bill. So if we had touched like misdemeanors, criminal offenses, then prosecutor on would have to say, hey, this is a prosecutable offense. I can definitely like do something in court about this. These are strictly fines that would be put on a land, a property owner. And if they didn't comply, then those fines could add up and then potentially have a lien on their property. So it's just civil fines. So I hear you auntie, but for this one, the prosecutors will not be involved. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, are you seeing any other questions? On the, oh, go, go ahead up to the mic. State your name. Uh, Aaron Kanye Ayakla. I was just wondering, um, did you say there's 12 YNI to Nanakuli? And what is the total for the whole island of Oahu? For our side, for the Waianae Moku, 16 game rooms. Across the whole island, at least 100. Okay, very good. Uncle, you have a question? Okay. Uh, state your name for the minutes, please. Great job. I just wanted to ask her if the other council members is on her role. Only her and Augie is doing this, but it's a cycle, yeah? Let us not fool ourselves. You know it's a cycle. They're not selling popcorn. You don't own them. Just go to any place and you have to, they have to background check you. I'm a felon. Everything. But no, it's just a cycle. Can't mention names, but that's how the thing turned. She said 16, 16 more opened up last night. So I just wanted to ask you, Andrea, if the rest of the council is with you, forget about our prosecutor because we just working right with the sofa. You know, this, that's what it is. Even Keila does a good job. Well, I will say thank you to uh, the board members who showed up because you were there, board member Myers. There were like a handful of council members that have never really dealt with game rooms. And so there are quite a few that were like, why don't you go undercover? Why don't you do this? I was like, don't you think we've been doing that? Like, holy smokes, this is like decades old issue. And even one council member said, oh, I don't have any in my district. And HPD stood up and they're like, yes, you do. I mean, we're talking in Haula, in Mililani, in everywhere on this island. So don't, it's, this is not just for white and I just making it clear. A hundred game rooms don't exist in our community. It's all over. So I think to uncle's point is there is a cycle 
And if you guys were there at the town hall, we were very clear. This will end when our community stands up and says no more. That means, and I didn't say this, somebody else said this. That means if it's your own family members. Guys, we can't be okay with this. We can't be okay with activities like this happening and then just turning, turning a blind eye to it. I had a girl in my church ask me to take her home after a church activity and drop her off at the game room where her dad was. I was like, no, I'm not taking you there. It's becoming commonplace for kids to say, I was hanging out at the game with my parents. So we really need to think about how this is affecting the next generation. And moreover, if you know things, we can't just turn away and say, well, it doesn't affect me. There's no game room by my house. What about the other families that have just been vindicated by? I mean, like people can't sleep at night. They're scared to speak up because they know that they have watches out there. So I'm just saying like Mana is a perfect example. He knows what it's like in that crime life. He knows how these things work. So if there are more community members that can speak out, that's great. I don't think that the support for this bill is all the way where I want it to be. I would love it to be more where people understand that what we have on the books for gambling is not gonna work. So the state laws that Darius and all of them did, and even in fact, uh, Representative Gates even changed one of the misdemeanors into a felony. That's fine. That's great. But we're not going to do anything by prosecuting gambling. We're talking about actual game houses that I would call illegal operations. It's not even a game room. It's not even the fishy game I'm worried about. It's the illegal things that happen in there. So I think that's what we have to say no to and not say, oh, it's just the fishy game. You know how many people have told me that? You're making such a big deal about the fishy game. Am I though, am I making a big deal about the fishy game when there's runaways inside there? And when people who have run out of the game room got shot, come on, it's not the fishy game. This is where a lot of the shootings happen because there's so much cash in these places. And when you have that much cash, people want it. So I just wanna thank those who came out and asked for any more support, I would love it. Thank you very much, board member thank Myers. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've been on the neighborhood board since 2017, and I've had emails uh, from community members about game rooms in their community. I've had seen um, Pastor Allen have to go to DHHL meetings month after month after month after month, talking about, you know, game room at Keolana and how it's been affecting with even firearms being used and families being threatened. Um, I've also seen the one at behind seconds uh, behind food giants where the Kapuna housing. So in the name of all these people that have been advocating uh, to get game rooms to stop game rooms. And this is the first time since I've been on the neighborhood board in six years that I've heard a bill being introduced to stop it to have a different direction for a solution. I'd like to make a motion that the Nanakuli Miley Neighborhood Board support Bill 57 and Bill 58 as it is currently written. Okay, we have a motion uh, that the Nanakuli Miley Neighborhood Board number 36 support Bill 57 and 58. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? I, I need a second. I second oh. it, but I just, I, I got, I got. Can I Wait, wait no. a second and talk? There's a motion stuff? on the floor. We can't discuss. I yeah, need a second. Second it. Okay. So there is a motion put on the floor. There is a second. We're open to discussion. Go ahead, board member Corona. Yeah, I mean I, I second it because I do I do support them. And I, I just want to make sure that just the language says as currently written. Because as currently written, um, there might be some changes that might be in there that so if we say as currently written, then um I don't know, I, I would just I'd want to support it but say that i don't know how to work i don't know how to say it but um i don't I, maybe as currently written maybe not be a part of the motion i don't know because okay so are you making an I amendment what, to i support motion? what everything about it but i just think that there's some challenges in there to, to, to gain the support that maybe others within the council or maybe in their districts or or in the communities that might want to give them more confidence in why the bill is there and what needs to be done to help with the game rooms, the illegal activities that's going on there. But um, I had some reservations, 58, even though, like I said, I, I posed it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I supported it, um, but for the better good. You know, there, there's, I'm looking for the balance 
but for the better good, I, I support it. I just thought there a little bit of tweaking need, need to happen. So I'm okay. rambling. Uh, um, go ahead, board member Tektar. I support this with the request that the language be written um, in, in its discussion purposes with a timeline, 30 days. It has to be just as clear and fines. A lot of people, like you said, got cash. They'll pay the fine, but there should be a limit. And it's gonna occur no matter what, but it's to make a statement that um, we're gonna make changes and let's make it with being clear how the language is written. So yes, please. And I don't know if you want to say that, but you could make a motion to support the bills with the inclusion of a timeline and property right protection. I think those are the two things I've heard, which are both doable. So, um, and then, and, and I, and you had made a, and one comment had been made about, uh, uh, again, there wasn't a, a, a number or a, a number of who, would, how many would be deputized, deputized. It could be, um, if, if uh, the chief of police wants to do one or one per district, I think it'd be better to have one per district than just one. Cause I think they would get overwhelmed. Um, with, with, with what they would have to do, um, if there's 1 per district, I don't know if that's something or. It might, because I would say that out here in district 8, we specifically work with narco vice, but in Kalihi, they actually have the crew unit doing it. The crime reduction unit, they do the game room bus, not narco. So I think you're right. It might not be a specific unit doing it in every district, but I think that'd be up to the chief. I think just leaving it open that he can deputize someone in the event that, because I don't think every case needs to share evidence, but I would say a lot of the cases that we have out here, no one's, no one's talking. So it doesn't matter how many times they call and say, there's something happening there. By the time a DPP inspector gets there, it's peachy keen, nothing's happening, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, so right now, board members, currently the motion on the floor is to support Bill 57 and 58 as written. Uh, is there an amendment to the motion to include timeline and property rights? Was that what it was? Somebody's gonna have to make that motion. So Before we make the motion, we have to send the first with the changes. So um, after discussion, uh, you can either call for the vote, which I will abstain from, or we can just ask the first person that made the motion to rescind so that the, the added correction can be made. Uh, okay, but I think amending the motion is, yeah, we can amend the motion. So if somebody wants to amend the motion, somebody needs to say that. So we don't need to rescind, we don't need to change, we just need to amend the current motion. So go ahead, uh, board member Tector. I move that we um, amend the motion to add the timeline, approximately 30 days and the property value, is that correct? Property rights. All right, so uh, the current motion on the floor is uh, to support Bill 57 and Bill 58 with inclusions of a 30-day timeline and property rights. Do I have a second? A second. I have a second. Okay, uh, any discussion, board members? Okay, I'll give it over to Jeffrey. Uh, he'll take a roll call. Okay, so we're gonna do a roll call for the amendment first. I'll just go in order of the sign-in sheet. Uh, Chair DeCourt. Um, Hano Hano, Naomi. Um, I believe Augustine is tuned in online. Augustine, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. I. Tector. 
Myers? Yes. Edward Hanohano and Corona. Okay. And then the second roll call was for the for the motion on the floor. I'm gonna go through one more time. Uh, Chair to court. Uh, Naomi Hanohano. Augustine. Aye. Okay. Tector? Aye. Myers? Aye. Edward Hanohano? And Corona? Okay, we have uh, seven ayes and two, zero abstentions, zero nays, and two absences. Okay, so the uh, motion passes. The Nanakuli Ma'ili Neighborhood Board will support Bill 57 and 58 with inclusions of a 30 day timeline and property rights. Uh, thank you so much, Councilmember Tupola. I'll go ahead and get that letter over to you. All right, awesome. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, we are going to officials' reports. Uh, so first up, we have uh, Governor Josh Green's representative. Gary, if you could go ahead and go to the microphone. Uh, Chair of the Court, members of the board, thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, my name is Gary Yamashiroya. Uh, though I am the special assistant to the Director of Taxation, I'm here to represent the administration. Um, I have nothing to report this month, um, however, um, I'm here to take any questions or concerns you have back to the executive agencies. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns, I'd be happy to reach out to the, to the departments. Member Myers and then board member Corona. Thank you, chair. Aloha. Welcome back. I had asked the previous uh, person that came uh, 2 months ago if. Uh, what was happening with Nanakuli Homes, because I saw it on the governor's website that it was one of the projects, the nine projects that he was recommending um, to have uh, to have uh, verticals, what, what they call verticals now, but high rises. Um, so in other words, move out all those houses and because they're single family houses, and then he was going to put in uh, over 500 units right off of Farrington Highway, um, and I never got a response. Okay, I will definitely, uh, I do remember that question, his report, I did read his report, so I'll, I'll follow up on that. Okay, mahalo, and thank you. Thank you. Okay, board member Corona. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, this is kind of, kind of some follow-ups from last month's meeting, because um, I, I don't think there was a governor's, was not here last night, uh, last one, but one was the, uh, I think, Representative Kila helped out a lot with this, but it was for the uh, the the school the, the the school security at Nanakuli. And thank you, Representative Kila, for the support on that. But obviously, with the issue that happened in Waianae, um, so when the question was about a school resource officer or some type of of support uh, for security at the schools, um, and obviously we know it falls on the DOE, but uh, and obviously we know that the principals of the schools have a budget. And they manage their budgets and they can use use the money as they need to use it for their schools and their safety health and safety of the school. So I just can we follow up on that? We with the DOE and find out, you know, um, in, in line with also with Representative Kilo may have uh, was able to help support for Nana Cooley, but with the most recent with Y and I, it's important that we uh, follow up on that, I think. And then uh, the, the the second item was the uh, and I, I know we're still waiting on our October 31st uh, letter from Haima. Regarding the Maili uh, um, siren, so if uh, if you can, um, if you weren't aware of that um, from the last month's meeting, if you could follow up, I'd be appreciated for next month. If yeah, um, actually, um, I am aware of it um, from read the minutes, and I know that there was a Haima representative that testified at the last meeting about um, the the vandalism that constantly occurs um, with the siren systems, and that they're trying to address it. I did talk to Anna Weintraub. 
who is the uh, spokesperson for Haima. And he says it's just a constant struggle. They do have some strategies they're going to implement to address the vandalism. So hopefully they can get a, a more permanent solution. Yeah, thanks. We one of the things is he they were supposed to re, uh, provide us a letter by the thirty first on uh, of this month of what their actions and what they're going timelines, et cetera. So I just wanted to make sure as the as the governor's rep or the state rep that you're aware of it if you weren't, and then something to follow up. I'll be asking again next month if we haven't heard anything by then. Okay. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, uh, board member Tector. Yes. Um, as far as our governor doing his part. As he became a uh, state uh, governor, the CIP that's going to be distributed or discussed, um, even to the point for homelessness. And I know to to Paula usually discuss things like that. I just want to make it clear: how can he and or you report to us that money is to be allocated per district? Um, we need improvement. We've noticed an increase of homelessness, and with that comes robbery and drugs, aside of gaming, but he needs to know that that's part of our community needing all these monies to come to us as well in our community via our representatives. Um, and hats off to what's happening, but more needs to be uh, shared and discussed and told to us. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, board members, any other questions? We'll open it up for the community. Community, any questions for governor's rep? I am also looking online, seeing no questions. You seeing that? You're into? Okay, very good. Uh, well, thank you very much, Gary, for always uh, being with us in person. We appreciate you taking the drive out here and sharing your uh information all right we're moving on uh to uh mayor's rep erwin thank you so much it's good seeing you go ahead thank you good evening uh madam chair board members everyone in the audience uh erwin kawath with board of water supply and also serving as the mayor's representative um i've already submitted my uh, uh mayor representative report uh, beyond that, I don't have anything more or to add or to uh, report on. So happy to take any questions. Okay, very good. Uh, I'll go to questions. Uh, board members, any questions? Mayor's rep, none. Seeing none. Community, any questions for the mayor's rep? Uh, anybody online? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, all right. Uh go ahead. Yep, you, you've unmuted yourself. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, so I got a question for BWS. Um can you brief the community and the board on the desalinization plant that is being done in Kalailo? So one of the questions I get is how did BWS obtain that land? I understand that the land was under the military and that the military gave it to BWS. Is I want to know if that's true, and then I also want to know about um, the desalinization. I, I I support the desalinization plan. I think we need that in Kalailoa, but I just kind of um, wondering how you guys can get that property, and uh, if you guys gonna bring that issue to the community so we can get community input about the plan. Mahalo. Uh, yes, thank you for that question. Uh, yes, the board does have a desalination plant in um, Campbell Industrial Park on former uh, military land that was given to us for the purposes of developing a desalination plant. Um, we are moving forward with awarding that particular project. There was a um, briefing on that um, uh, plant and the current status already done, but I will make sure I'll take it back and ask the department to uh, put out another notice and then brief the community on the status of that project. All right. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, no other questions for mayor's rep. Uh, we're going to keep him up there and we're going to move on to uh, board of water supply report. So thank you. Go ahead. Madam chair, um, uh, board members, uh, Erwin, again, I'm uh, back. And I also serve as the Board of Water Supplies uh, representative. 
I've also submitted my report. Uh, beyond that, there's I don't have anything new or to report. Uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, board members. Any questions? Board of Water Supply, any questions? Uh, any community questions for Board of Water Supply? Representative Keela, if you can go up to the microphone. Can you let the community know when the time period for comment on the water proposed rates is and when the meeting is to provide testimony or how to submit testimony in support or opposition of the rate changes. Uh, thank you, Representative Keela, for that question. Uh, we are currently taking comments. We had originally um, posted October 15th as a deadline for receiving comments, but we will take them all the way up to the November board meeting. So the November board meeting, the topic will come up. The board will um, take testimony at that meeting and, of course, make a final decision on the proposed water rates. Um, October, we do have a, the board will be briefed on um, the feedback we've been receiving so far at different community meetings. That board meeting is next week, Monday, 2 o'clock. It is also going to be available or be, you can also hear it um, uh, live, live stream. Just go to the Board of Water Supply website, it contains all the information on how to connect live stream. So that's next week, Monday, 2 o'clock. The board will be briefed on the comments that we've received so far, but the actual decision by the board will be made at the November board meeting, and I can provide you some additional details. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Erwin. We do have a question online. Thank you, Representative Keela, for that question. Um, Salcedos, uh, if you can unmute, I, I'm, I'm hoping that your audio will be better coming through this time. Um, but did you have a question for Board of Water Supply? Uh, no, no, not Board of Water Supply. It'll be the mayor's rep on this. Is that okay, go ahead. You can ask agenda? your question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, as uh, I was discussing with uh, Board Member uh, Myers, regarding related to commercial property assessment financing program. And uh, there's uh, issues regarding the CPACE and more clarification, because she simulated my questioning and how to look at things on how to interpret the city ordinance uh, for assessing commercial, because this is a, a financing program for commercial properties. So specifically, she putting it out there and uh, we're discussing back and forth. And I realized, you know what, we need more interpretation on this. So I went out and got an interpretation from Roger Babcock of the city environmental division who handles the wastewater de uh, department. Uh, this uh, financial assessment program, not only for the financial, for cesspool conversions and other measures under this uh, languages here, but he also, uh, in respect, the, def the interpretation was meant for also agricultural landowners, no matter what size it is. So this thing would put landowners, uh, giving them a voluntarily to go into the some type of uh, loan program, but it's not written in here. So I went into this and with reservations, and that's why I got clarity on this thing. So November 1st is a hearing on Bill 56. November 1st on city with the, intro, the introducer on this what is bill is uh, Matt wires. He introduced this bill. So, with this said, I'm going to enter this hearing. Accepting the city uh, city ordinance bill 56, but with amendments. Because they have to be more specific in how they impacting agricultural landowners into this. So that's my vote okay. on this thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salcedo. Uh, Erwin, did you catch any of that? Some... Okay, I apologize, Mr. Salcedo. The sound is coming out very choppy. Um, oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I think it's, yeah, if you could drop your question in the chat, we'll have uh, Erwin get back to you. Yes, um, that would help. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, 
Okay, um, no other questions for Mayor's Ware, Board of Water Supply. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to Department of Transportation. Uh, we have with us, thank you, Erwin, very much. Uh, George Absidy, Highways Administrator for Department of Transportation. Uh, we have a lot of projects that are uh, happening along the Waianae Coast. Uh, so he is gonna be able to give us some updates. Uh, I'll go ahead and share screen. Can I share screen? Okay, hold on one second, please. Yeah, I think the presentation was for the entire uh, Leeward Coast, but i um, just going to go over the projects in the Nanakuli area. Yeah, it's only for our area. Okay. Okay, I apologize. Bear with us for a second, please. It's um, too hard. To, I can do without it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I apologize. We all know the issues down here in our Nanakuli Ma'ili district. So I'm pretty sure we're going to know the projects that George is referring to. So uh, I apologize. Go ahead, George. Okay, Chair the court, um, board members, thank you for having me here. Again, George Epsetti with the Highways Division. I'm the Highways Administrator. Uh, the first project I want to talk about is the Maipaloa Bridge. Um, we're looking at completion in June 2024. So uh, I understand we've had a lot of uh, delays and it's taken a long time, but that June 2024 uh, is a pretty firm date for us. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, the latest uh, delay was caused by some underground fiber optic cable that we couldn't detect because it was drilled through the, uh, uh, the coral. So uh, we have to make some adjustments, but again, we're looking at June 2024 to finish. Uh, the Farrington Highway widening project, uh, that's a, continuing the five lane uh, widening, uh, the fifth lane, adding that fifth lane from Hilalua to Mohihi. Uh, we're also extending the shared use path uh, on the Makai side of the, of the highway and upgrading the sidewalk on the, on the Malka side. Uh, advertising is looking like December 2025, so that's uh, construction around summer 26. Cost is about $45 million. Next project is uh, Paakea Road Improvements. So it's gonna go all the way, uh, the entire length of the road from Maili'ili Road to um, Lualoa'ilei Road. The cost is about $45 million. Uh, construction, we're looking at about mid 2026 as well. Uh, we're gonna be acquiring land from uh, private entities, the city and the Navy so that we can uh, do this construction. Next project is the Ulihava Bridge Maintenance and Replacement Projects. So there's a preliminary uh, maintenance project that we're gonna do to do, uh, address some of the spalls so that the bridge can last uh, for, till we actually get to um, doing the replacement. So the, uh, the maintenance work is $900,000 and we're looking to start at the end of the month. We did some preliminary work just last week, uh, so it's already beginning. Uh, as far as the replacement of the bridge, that's gonna be um, somewhere about mid 2026 as well. Uh, we're looking to replace the bridge, obviously. The cost is 22 million. And part of that uh, project is going to be looking at solutions to help reduce some of that sand buildup in the, under the bridge or in front of the bridge. The next project is the Maiilili Stream Bridge uh, Rehab. So that's basically the spall repairs uh, underneath the bridge. Looking at the sometime in spring of 2027, cost is about $12 million. We're also looking at uh, putting in some raised crosswalks uh, along Farrington Highway uh, at the Beach Park Road, Manununu Street, and uh, Alapaki Street. So uh, they're supposed to be installed in November, 
but we have some delays in the layout. There's some problems uh, with the geometry trying to make it work, but um, and the, and the the uh, contract is a little busy, so we have to push it back to uh, mid December. But they will be going in, and that's pretty much everything I have right now. Is there anything, any questions that you folks have? Okay, very good. Uh, yes, we will have some questions. Uh, we'll go ahead to the board members first. Uh, board member Myers, then board member Corona. Mahalo, chair. I have two questions. Um, first, you know, regarding the slide, um, I'm trying to go back to it. Um, where DOT, Miley raised crosswalks, Beach Park Road. I didn't know we had a Beach Park Road. Are you going to do any cr raised crosswalks in Nanakuli? We have three school, well, actually four schools with uh, Kavaihona. And then up Nanakuli Valley between Nanakuli Avenue and Haleakala, we have three schools that serve the whole coastline. So when the kids are trying to go catch the bus and they're going to cross the street or kupunas, et cetera, they have to use Nanakuli Avenue or Haleakala Avenue to get across the street to catch the bus. Um, so I just wanted to put it out that, you know, I thought that we were going to have race crosswalk in Nanakuli Avenue. I thought we have two already out there. So when you said Beach Park uh, Road, I don't know a Beach Park Road, so I thought maybe it was the Nanakuli Beach Park. Can you get that clarified? Yeah, I can. Yeah, if it's in Nanakuli. Yeah. So that was my first question. The second one is um, related to west the west side, Wainaimoku. So Wainaimoku, all of Wainaimoku, meaning from uh, Honokai Hale all the way to Makaha or Kaena Point, the only way we can get home and we can exit the, the coastline is on Farrington Highway. So end of September, uh, last week of September, I had attended a meeting and I had asked Ed Sniffin about a second access, but I also brought up to Director Ed Sniffin that we, see, we feel like a stepchild in, on the west side because all the money seemed to go towards improving you know, Makakilo people can get another exit to come to Waianae or to go to Target. They can, you know, when they're coming down a hill, Makakilo Drive, they got one exit rampway or all those rampways to, for them to get into Kapole. All of that has been invested by uh, DOT. Besides that, they get underground electricity. We have telephone poles. So if there's any kind of water hurricane, hurricane or whatever, you know, the telephone poles can fall on the the road, just like how it did in Lahaina. But board member, I'll so ask you if you my, could wrap up. My concern is that five days ago, um, I saw in Civil Beat that Makakilo Drive was concerned about, Makakilo residents concerned about another exit. When I had asked Director Ed Sniffin about a second Makakilo people having a second one, because before we have a second access out of the Waianae Coast, he said he wasn't going to invest any money into that. He wasn't going to invest any money into that. So okay. I saw this article in Civil B. Can you give us okay. any clarity? Is Thank is it you. now? Uh, you guys are now investing money into a second. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Myers. Access George? Of Kilo Drive. Yeah, it's not our. That's not our property, actually. So I'm not quite sure. As far as I know, we're not doing anything. Yeah. Okay. There might be talk about it, but it's not our property. Okay. Mahalo. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Board Member Myers. Board Member Corona. Oh yes. Thank you. Uh, just a few questions here. Uh, for the widening project, have you has the funding for that? Um, has the EA started for that yet? Are you waiting for, the, or is that going to happen when the it's advertised in two years? No, it's it's going going now. So the EA started before you advertise. Yeah, we, yeah, mm -hmm. we have to complete that. Okay, all right, and then uh, the Paakea Road. That's that's like three to four years from now. So that, uh, th what I'm getting at is is all the projects that I'm seeing on here are three, two plus years out. Um, so I'm concerned that the, uh, the funding that's been allocated for that might yeah. get it sucked up for something else. Because when you say you're average, it's not gonna get advertised or a request for a bid until two to three years from now. So that's, I get a big concern with that, especially when we're talking structural for, for bridges. Um, and when you say girders for the Maile Ili stream bridge, then when I hear girders, I think girder support. You know, so when I hear three years down the road is when the advertisement is just going to go out, that tells me that it's going to be 
even longer after that. So I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, all these projects are two, three years out uh, from even starting if the contract gets bid. Yeah, that's basically how we work. We, we, uh, we secure the funding. Then we get, uh, we, you know, we start with the design monies and then the, we secure the construction monies down the road. So uh, basically uh, we're looking five to, actually we look 10 years ahead, but we secure the funding for the, the three to five years in front of us. So basically these projects that I uh, mentioned to you folks now, all this, the funding secured for that all the way up to construction. Okay, and then my final uh, one, two more quick points is one, I think the three uh, raised crosswalks are at the, uh, is the, the three crosswalks that are in my Ely that don't have traffic lights. And I think those are the ones that are the ones yeah. that are listed here. But I thought Mr. Sniffen had mentioned that they're going, getting away from the raised crosswalks and they're just gonna have speed humps and not on necessary crosswalks themselves. So that's why I thought he had said it previously, but okay. It depends on, the, yeah, it kind of depends on the area we're looking at. Some places don't have a lot of crosswalks, and so and and but uh, there might be a school nearby. So just because there isn't a crosswalk there, if there's a need to slow down the uh, the, uh, the traffic, uh, we'll put a raised uh, speed table. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd, I'd like to get with get your point of contact afterwards, so I can email you directly yeah, about sure. some other additional questions I might have. Yeah, is thank it not is there a transportation chair? Or are you I am. Ah, That's him. Good. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, community, any questions? Oh, I apologize. Any more board members? Community in the room, any questions uh, online? If you have a question for Department of Transportation, please go ahead and uh, raise your virtual hand. Go ahead, state your name for the minutes. Connie Victor. Uh, my question is, what is the scope of work for the Julialva Bridge? And, um, what is the timeline to be done? And um, how will that affect the traffic and the kids getting out of school and stuff like that? Sorry, I missed the first part. Like, what is the scope of work to be done on the Julialba Bridge? And how long will it take to be done? Like, what is the projected ending? Because the Miley Bridge took forever, like years. And then that would happen. I, I had to sit in traffic to get here tonight. And it was like after six. How are that going to affect our community? Kids still coming home late, that's why. Yeah, so the Ulihava Bridge, the, the first one is just going to be uh, repairs underneath. So that shouldn't attra uh, affect traffic at all. It's the replacement. Yeah, so that's the one. So, um, yeah, we have to prepare the traffic control plan. Uh, the the Mike Palo Oil Bridge. That was messed up in the beginning. It replaced the entire bridge. Yeah. So almost like my Palo Alto. Yeah. But my Palo Alto, we had uh, the contractor defaulted, the one that won the bid. And it took us like almost three years for working with the bonding company to get a new contractor. And, and uh, frankly, they had issues. They were a new company that just started doing this kind of work and they had issues. Uh, but we work with them. Uh, and you know we're finally at a point where, you know, we're, we're come, well, we're getting towards the end, and we don't expect Ulihava to take that long. It should be less than two years. Yeah, these will be done before that. Yeah, my Palo is going to be done. Makaha, the two Makaha bridges are going to be done. Less than two. Okay, very good. Uh, community, any other questions uh, going online? Seeing no questions. No, no questions. Oh, okay. We're very, very brief. Yeah. What are they doing down there on Farrington and Kalilua? Are they making a new off ramp? Does anybody know? Are they making a new off ramp? It looks like they're doing a lot of construction, like they're making a new off ramp there by Target as you're going. Yeah, Valley. Is, uh, is that a DOT thing where you're authorizing a new off ramp to get into that area? There's a new interchange going to be, I think there's one more interchange we have left. There's, there's, there are three phases. So we did the first two, there's phase three that's come, that's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of goes back to what, what board member Myers was saying, how in and out of Kapolei is, is wonderful, <laughs> but 
getting out here is, is terrible. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, but it's not like we're not spending any money. I mean, these, these projects that we're talking about, it's $120 million worth of work. And so, but I understand the, uh, the desire for a bypass. I mean, um, it's, uh, it's a difficult thing, but there's, there's uh, issues with land, right? And that's expensive. Uh, that's why we're trying to do the best we can with Pakea. It's not even our road. We're going to go buy it and do something. That, and uh, it's something that we can do. And, you know, uh, the city has been working with us to get there. Uh, we're lucky that uh, they partnered with us. Uh, the Navy's been cooperative. And, and so um, they, they, they're still talking about other access routes. If we can help, we'll try. Okay. Very good. George, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you coming here uh, tonight. Thank you for driving all the way out here. I uh, apologize for the traffic, but then I don't really apologize for the traffic, so then you can kind of catch it firsthand. <laughs> but thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, okay, and we are moving on to our our next agenda is item, uh, Congresswoman uh, Jill Tokuda. Uh, do we have representative for Congresswoman Jill Tokuda online? I don't see her. Okay, all right. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on. Oh, uh, Council Member Andrea Tupola uh, did leave uh, her newsletter with us. Um, and we will move on to Senator Miley Shimabukuro. Uh, sure. Yes. Before we go into Senator Miley's report, um, I wanted to clarify that regarding our rules um, and decorum, I would like all community members to address our senator, all of our elected officials, whether it's Congresswoman Jill Tukuda, she should be addressed as uh, if she came to our meeting, Congressman Tukuda, and then Senator Miley as well, Senator Miley or Semer Senator Shimabukuro. I, I really don't want to hear community members calling them by their first name, Maile or uh, Darius. I really want them to be honored with their title as they're, they've been, they are our elected officials. So that I would like to be part of decorum, please. Thank you. Uh, is that a motion? Are you making a Oh, motion? no. I'm saying that I want to clarify that to the community members that come to our uh, board meeting, whether it's on social media, I mean, on virtual or in the room. Because in the past, I've had several community members say, Maile, Darius, I don't, wanna, I don't want that to happen in our board meetings anymore. I would like them to be honored for their title. Mahalo. Okay, we will make that suggestion. Uh, also online, we will make that suggestion. However, I don't know how we're going to monitor that. Uh, and we're not going to withhold uh, moving forward in the meeting if you do not address our elected officials properly. I think that our board does that very well. We set a very good example to make sure that we address them by their uh, uh, well-respected titles. Uh, and we would ask that our community members do the same. However, uh, if we have new committee members, they don't know the protocol, we're not going to interrupt anybody, uh, and we're not going to make anybody feel out of place. Uh, so thank you very much, board member, for that uh, suggestion. And we are moving on. Senator Miley uh, Shimabukuro, we have with us. I see Kiahi. I see Senator back there as well. So there she is, looking amazing. <laughs> Kiahi, do you want to unmute yourself? <laughs> hey, uh, aloha, uh, Chair of the Court and the rest of the, honor the honorable members of your committee, uh, of your neighborhood board. Um, uh, we didn't have, I just, I put on the uh, chat list for anybody that's on virtual or that have uh, access to it. I put our virtual newsletter and I, there's just a, one particular issue that's kind of new. I, I know Representative Keela might speak to it himself. Also regarding, it's on page two of our newsletter, two and three. It's the Kalima decision um, where we had appropriated a couple of years ago, $328 million. It looked like that money was going to be released to the 3,000 uh, class members of the Kalima lawsuit. The um, uh, I think the uh, the point we wanted to make was there was one person who had filed an appeal, uh, an objection to the settlement that he had received, which was zero. It was part of his share of the settlement. So he filed an appeal. Uh, the state uh, attorney general we've been working very closely with believes that uh, it's a legitimate appeal. Everybody who feels like they've been wronged, all these 
uh, beneficiaries that felt they've been wrong have the right to appeal. And but it, there's been a lot of backlash against this one particular individual. Uh, the state attorney general has expedited the process, has brought the case to the Supreme Court, looking to have it heard in the next, uh, in the briefest period of time. Once the Supreme Court has decided whether or not this particular individual has a a, a legitimate appeal and 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 addresses it then they can reinitiate what it is that everybody they'll divide up the settlement between the case members or the class members suits so th that was primarily but uh, the senator shima Bukuro also wanted to make sure all those people who are still struggling waiting for the settlement it's been 22 years in the making she put on the newsletter all these various uh, rental and utility ass um, assistance all the links and everything on our newsletter Outside of that, um, the newsletter just has various information about other uh, issues in the community. Please feel free to ask. If you have any questions or concerns, you can contact our office or even ask us now. I appreciate your time, Chair. Thank you for your uh, attention. Mahalo Kiahi, thank you so much. And I apologize everybody here in the room. Uh, I think our audio is coming from the speaker here because it sounds like everybody else online can hear clearly. So our apologies uh, community members and also to the board members. I know that hopefully when we watch the recording, we'll be able to make out what we said. Uh, Kiahi, we did, uh, we did get senators a newsletter. So I did go ahead and distribute that. Um, so board members, uh, any questions? For Kiahi, okay, Board Member Myers. Okay, go ahead. Mahalo Kiahi. Thank you, Chair. Mahalo Kiahi. You know, I saw in the newsletter about the Waianae High School cancellation of the football um, football game. Mm -hmm. And is DOT giving any feedback regarding you know this type of violence or harassment or of nature where between the schools? Um, are they taking a position? For the rest of the school year, or is it just specific games between specific um, teams? Board Member Myers, did you mean uh, DOE, Department DOE. of Education, or Department of Transportation? No, Department of Education, but I'm asking Senator because I saw it in a newsletter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I appreciate that about that the question. Y9 one. If she knows, yeah, do you I, know, I appreciate Kiahi, the question. I appreciate that. DOT question, has taken a position. I mean, DOE, um, DOE. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. DOE okay. has taken a position to um, cancel all, all games, or is is it just between like certain teams on you know when it come along the Waianae Coast, whether it's Nanakuli or um, Waianae High? Uh, uh, thank you very much, Board Member Meyer. I think that's a great question. the The last cancellation was a was a consensus between the two principals of the schools that were going to be playing, and in the newsletter you could see we have both their signatures that of uh, the principal saying we are agreeing between our two schools that we'll be canceling an unfortunate cancellation but um uh but maybe appropriate in, in when it comes in terms of being safe having uh, safe experiences and safe engagements with our schools but uh i don't think the doe made a particular a broad blanket that these things are going to be canceled many other schools aren't having these kinds of concerns or threats come to the surface yet but in this case between castle and um, why not high school? They decided it's uh, throw with, we won't throw caution to the wind. We'll just be careful and we'll cancel the game this time and hopefully address it at the school base level. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, board members, any questions? If not, we'll go ahead and open it up to the community. Community, any questions? Seeing none, any questions online? Uh, no, seeing none. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Keahi. Uh, Thanks, we appreciate you always uh, updating us with uh, what Senator is doing in our community. Mahalo. Thank we are you, moving sir. on now to our representative, uh, Darius Keela. Thank you so much, Representative. Aloha, board members, and sorry, Aloha, Chair to Court and board members. Sorry. So nice. I don't have to rush tonight. <laughs> um, I, I saw a lot of you last week at our town hall, so I just want to say thank you for coming. I, I got to say that probably was the, the most attended town hall since the DOT one, so I'm glad that there's a consistent form of engagement. And again, I invite anybody to please connect with me via my office or online to stay up to date as all of those. Um, okay. I'll be honest, I don't, I'm, I'm late on my newsletter. I'll be completely honest. This Kalima 
developments have probably imploded our office since last week. And I mean, to Kiahi's point, right? I mean, now they're doing an emergency briefing Supreme Court hearing, I mean, five days. This is crazy, unprecedented. But I, I think we have to get to the point to release the money, right? The monies are already in a court account. So we cannot wait any longer. So please forgive me, I have that coming. But I wanna draw attention to the community survey. I know I got to talk to some folks who are at the town hall about it, but this is probably the most comprehensive forum where I've asked you folks to engage with me on, on, on a lot of things. I think I'm exceeding 60 questions and I, I'm really sorry, but I have to get a more detailed pulse, I think on where folks stand. Since the town hall, I think I've received about 12 responses so far, and it's very interesting to see the scope of mindset and the diversity of mindset. But what this will help me do is not just for me, right? I, I intend to pass this out to my colleagues. So when they are also enacting pieces of legislation, they're thinking about the communities, not just in their own, but also neighboring communities throughout the state. I plan to deliver this to our executive branch and even our members at the council who may as well take up on similar issues on where we stand. So I implore you please to do that. I'm hoping to have it done before our last town hall, which is November 28th with the legislative wrap up where I can present more detailed, comprehensive responses of what came out of that. So I wanna go back to the bridge because I think there was a lot of concerns in the last months that has occurred. And I, I just have to tell folks the same thing I told you folks at the DOT town hall. This infrastructure is original to some of the beginnings of this community. So I, 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 I shared the frustration of the slow and non fast completion, but let it be done right instead of being rushed. And when this is power, we have a bridge for at least 50 years. So I, I told a constituent who may be of older of age that you got to live in the, the time where everything was built and given to you this time and age is now being fixed and repaired for us. So if we can kind of, I'm not asking for patience, I'm not asking for forgiveness for the timeline, but if we can operate in that capacity, let Wainai, Nanakuli, and our co-sign get the beautiful things to come. Thank you. Um, uh, Representative, if I can ask you to wrap up your report. Thank you. Okay. Um, as you folks know, I was able to work with DOE. We got security for the school literally the following day after that meeting. I can't thank Kaz Hoggy enough for that. To board member Myers point, Makakilo extension bridge is a city and the state has not taken a formal stance or on the project. And I've constantly expressed to them that there are 60, 50,000 members here compared to 20,000 folks there. Folks chose to live there with those circumstances. We were promised other things on this side. Haima, to all your folks updates, I wanna provide this one. Uh, as of today, there was an approval for uh, expeditious repair of the siren. So. The repair orders went out today and should be done shortly. And then a formal request to move the siren up has also been submitted that has to wait for approval. So it's gonna be repaired the siren and then our next one is moving the thing up. So I just wanna provide those updates to you folks and I'm open for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for your proactiveness with the siren. Um, I know that I was very compelled with Ms. Um, Kamata. Kamata's, uh, Kamata's uh, uh, situation uh we'll open it up for a question board members board member myers uh okay go ahead thank you chair um if everybody did see this survey this this link i um i did the survey when i went to the town hall it's very 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 long so put aside time that you can stay focused on it but remember it's an investment in our community because we're giving directions to our representative of what's important to us. So I went on to say what is important to me. And it was, it's a really deep dive into even like firearms at the schools. Um, do we want that um, for people, you know, that are security at the schools to have firearms? Um, so it's a whole lot of even gambling if we want to make gambling illegal, uh, legal. So all of those things, if we want our representative to represent us well, we need to really give him the our mana'o and then don't complain later on. Thank you. Mahalo. I agree. Thank you so much. Board Member Tektor. Aloha. Thank you, um, Representative Keila, for creating that town hall meeting that answered uh, a lot of questions, especially in the Kalima lawsuit. Um, 
my one question is, are you able to set up another town hall to dialogue with uh, attorneys yes. and clerks? And that would be very, very yes. uh, positive for our community. If I could respond to that, Chair, um, Board Member Myers has been active as well as you, Board Member Tector. So I'm imploring Speaker Psyche to invite the attorneys to probably have to do an online forum just because of the sake of time and trying to secure a place. So I will let your chair know and you folks as well how that meeting will proceed. Great, thank you so much. If we could have the judge that is presiding over the case, uh, Lisa Cataldo, Judge Lisa Cataldo, uh, I think that would be helpful um, as well. So I just wanted to make that suggestion. Uh, board members, any other questions? Community members, uh, anyone online? Nobody online. Okay. Uh, Representative Keila, again, thank you so much for your great work. Your town halls have been incredible. The representatives that you've been bringing down here have been very helpful. I think it's good that they hear from us, um, kind of traveling through. Uh, you you want to feel the emotion here uh, in Nanakuli. So I think that that would be that that's a good thing. So thank you. We appreciate you. Sure. Mahalo very much. Uh, okay. We're going to be moving work. on. Yep. Moving on to uh, Army Representative, okay, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jason Capis. Did I pronounce that correctly? Capis, okay, thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, board members, community members. So, three things I have announcements for the community. The first is JPMRC. This is our big scale training event that, we, that occurs here on Oahu and Hawaii Island. That will be occurring from November 1st to the 10th. Um, so what you can expect for that is a lot more military traffic, a lot more overhead traffic, low flying aircraft and planes flying into both Wheeler Army Airfield and Dillingham. Um, so that's an exercise is critical to, to us as we prepare to, to fight if called upon. So um, if you have any concerns about that, you can contact 808-656-3487. Um, the next announcement is our November job fair that will be occurring on November 28th at the airport Honolulu Hotel beginning at 830 and ending at 2 p.m. And this is going to be open to the public. Finally, as always, we're always looking for volunteer opportunities. We just had some soldiers volunteer at the Kapuna Food Pantry recently. It was on their day off, so it was really awesome to see those soldiers go out there and dedicate their time. Um, so those are the three announcements I have for the community. I have one more announcement for the board. Um, there was a lot of interest in the Koli Koli Pass previously. Um, so the the Garrison Army Garrison is putting together a familiarization ride, and, and for representatives, community representatives, elected officials, and neighborhood boards, they should have extended an invitation out to the board members here. If you haven't received that, I'm here to extend the invitation. It will occur next Monday, October 24th, from 09 to 12. And they said there's room for one or two board members who want to want to come join, we'll go up and down the Koli Koli Pass, talk about the MOU, the mem memorandum, and when it would be open and other things. So, any, any questions, that's all. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, board members, any questions? Board Member Myers, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, mahalo for your email regarding the things that you provided. We have several community members that come to our board meeting and ask for your contact information. So I was going to ask Chair um, if we can use our, our neighborhood board agenda towards the bottom where there's extra space to put his contact. Or would you be okay if we had put that on the agenda? Because it's mailed to the people's home as well as online where we can put blurbs of different officials phone numbers including his yeah i'll take that in consideration my only hesitation with something like that would be uh just finding uh, a fit for everyone's contact information towards the bottom below the map below the map area oh no i, I know where you're talking about but yeah. what my concern is is that if we put one, we'll have to put all, but I will take that into consideration. Okay. Thank you. Mahalo. Yes, because certain community members, when they're having a community event that they would, you know, and then like how much time you need in advance, how much time do you usually need in advance to rally up um, support? So it's usually a good idea 30 days in advance, we can make sure those soldiers or anyone that's not doing a training event or something else, and we get the best people to volunteer for that certain event. Okay. Um, I think. I, did you give his information so that the cleanup, the beach cleanup? Yeah. Yep, I did. Okay. Um, no, that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Thank you. Uh, community, any questions for Army? Anyone online? Seeing none, okay, we will move on to uh, Navy. Uh, we've got Danny Hayes with us. Uh, we've got a bit, thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel, for joining us. We appreciate you continuing to be with us in person. Uh, Danny Hayes, uh, there's a lot going on at Red Hill. I'm sure you have some very positive updates for us. So uh, if you could unmute yourself and we will try to make out what you're saying, go ahead. Aloha, Chair. Um, thank you all for having me. And yes, um, they began uh, defueling yesterday. The, um, the joint task force had announced this morning that um, they've already moved, at least as of this morning, uh, 3.5 million gallons. Um, and I haven't received the update yet, but I'm sure there was more throughout the day. So 3.5 million gallons was moved uh, yesterday, the first day uh, that they began defueling. Um, they do um, expect to remove approximately 104 um, million gallons. Um, when it's when it's done, so we're looking, we're still looking at um, early next year, probably springtime, um, early spring, for uh, completion uh, of the defueling. Uh, the other big um, item, because we also sent the um, the report to you all, uh, Chair, um, but the other part of it that I wanted to highlight is the um, uh, we got a lot of questions about the air quality monitoring um, devices that were put up around the joint base and around the. Uh, Kapalina housing over in uh, Eva area, and I uh, just wanted to explain a little bit more. So initially, those were put out to um, to help gauge the air quality for those residents that are over there um, to establish a baseline um, so that they know if there's anything that's that's not necessarily right during this uh, defueling process, they'll be able to know and and be able to compare the air quality. Um, but it's also going to continue taking measures after they've defueled. And this information will be good for residents as well, just so that they have an understanding of what their air quality is in, in that area over by uh, the joint base and Kapalina housing. So I wanted to highlight those two, um, those two points. And uh, I believe, I'm, I'm not sure if um, uh, Victor Flint was able to make it out there, um, but if not, uh, Chair, that's, that's all that I have. And okay, there he is, I see him. So I will turn it over to Vic. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, uh, before you uh, go on to your uh, portion, uh, board members, do you have any questions? Okay, we'll go ahead to board member Myers. Uh, no questions on this side. Just with regards to what had Danny had shared with um, uh, Red Hill. Go ahead, board member Myers. I have a question regarding the Red uh, the Red Hill defueling. I saw in your email in the announcement that re with regards to the blessing, but it said defueling operation set to commence October 16th, which was yesterday. How is, did you guys start yesterday, October 16th? Yes. Is it, and is it a 24 hours uh, operation? Uh, yes. So for um, about six days out of the week, they'll be working um, all, all hours to do it. Okay, mahalo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board member Myers. Uh, community, any questions with regards to Red Hill before we pass it over to Victor Flint? Okay, and seeing none online. Go ahead, Victor. Well, we haven't heard from you in a while. We're making great time. Perfect timing. <laughs> Perfect timing. Thank you. Go ahead, share your report. Hi, board. Victor Flint, Naval Facilities. Uh, Jacob Caldwell, who's 11, he had dreams of coming to Pearl Harbor. He learned about Pearl Harbor on TV and in school. And then this foundation, Dreams Come True, uh, hooked his family and him up with the Navy. So the Navy, along with the National Park Service, is arranging for a visit for Jacob and his family to go to the Arizona Memorial and visit a submarine and a big ship. And then they'll dine at the dining facility with the sailors. And we want to ensure that young Jacob's last dreams come true. U.S. Navy Kupuna team on September 21st, the U.S. Navy Kupuna team met with Admiral Barnett and his staff. Admiral Barnett is the guy that's going to be taking over after the defuel. So that will be all the remediation stuff. So the Kupuna shared their mana'u with him. And on October 24th, Kupuna team met with the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Meredith Berger. And they also spoke with her uh, uh, about 
uh, the history and how they felt about all this. It was very, very interesting and very good. How Olela Hanau, the Navy's birthday, uh, was the other day on October 13th. On October 13th, 1775, by act of Congressional Congress, the U.S. Navy was established. And Koli Koli Pass, open and operational in case of declared emergency. That's all I have. Are there any questions? Okay, very good. Uh, board members, any questions for Navy? Any board member Myers? Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Aloha, Victor. Um, you know, I've never taken up you taking taking it, your invitation up on doing a tour of the Luolo Lake Naval, but I'd like to um, request for a tour of for new board members and myself and community members that may be interested because I really like to see um, what do you mean by Kole Kole Pass, the condition of Kole Kole Pass. I would also like to see the bunkers. Uh, I'd also like to see where live ammunition is held, uh, being stored. Um, and then also the active, when Navy is saying that they're active at Lua Lua Lay Naval, um, I'd like to see what that, was, what that encompasses um, with the tour. So if I can, you know, via email, maybe a whole bunch of us or whoever wants to come and join me, but we can talk about a, a tour, I, I would appreciate it. Okay. Mahalo. Awesome. Very good. Yes, I did take that tour and it was very educational. So thank you very much. Like how you, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, community, any questions for uh, Navy? Uh, any online? Okay, seeing none, we are moving on. Thank you very much, Victor. Awesome. Very good. Okay, board business. Uh, agenda item uh, A, $1,000 for community outreach. Uh, we have our treasurer that is, um, she is receiving her healing, so she's not with us. Uh, board member Ayo is uh, on the mainland, and <laughs> you need to call your cousin. Um, <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, so, so, so budget, um, uh, we'll open it up for discussion. Board members, any suggestions? Go so ahead, board member Myers. Clarification. Is that the city budget for NCO for it is. neighborhood boards? Correct. Okay. Yes. So what are the specific guidelines on how we can spend it? So I can make recommendations on that. What are the specific guidelines? Uh, my understanding of what this would need to be used for is for community outreach. So, so community outreach, meaning like if we wanted to have um, a Zoom account being paid by the city so that we could have community meetings or to pay for the library for community meetings, is that part of the outreach? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have board member uh, Hano Hano go ahead and share. Would you or like what to share? Or what about also for um, like refreshments at our, at our meetings and lays and stuff like that? Um, this community of the thousand dollars is for C community members in the community. So something like a beach cleanup, if we agree to in a beach cleanup, um, they will give us t-shirts, hats, and they will pay for like the trash bags, the gloves, things like that. They want to see the community members in community doing work. Few boards are saying, oh, can we just give it to a cleanup organization? Say, uh, that's not the spirit of the money. So like I said, we decide the uh, community, um, again, we can get t-shirts, uh, banners, hats, and, you know, again, they'll pay for whatever equipment. If we decide to cover graffiti, pay the paint and, you know, the accessories. So it's that type of um, uh, money. Well, that's what they want the boards to, you know, use the money for. So they're actively in the community. And then when someone maybe passes by the cleanup, they'll see a whole bunch of neighborhood board shirts and, and, you know, actually say, hey, our, our neighborhood board people actually participate in this type of thing. So that's the spirit of the money. 
Chair, can we defer this to next month and with an with um, us receiving from the executive secretary, Lloyd Yonanaka, specific guidelines with specific examples because I didn't hear a yes or a no regarding my question about community um, committee meetings for a Zoom account or to pay the $20 to the library um, for each month. And then is this, when does it expire? Like, is it just, is it $1,000 each year for each fiscal year? So we end in June, uh, 2024, and then we go get another thousand dollars in July of 2024 to 2025, or is it for our entire two years uh, term? But I really want clarification instead of guessing. Yeah. Um, thank you. There are a few questions that I am able to answer. Uh, it is a one time one thousand um, dollars, but then I but. Uh, uh, to your point of moving it to next month, I do agree um, for a few reasons. Uh, our treasurer is not here um, and we have another board member who is not here as well. So I would like all of us to give input. Uh, so if you would like to make a motion uh, to move it to next month, uh, we can go ahead and at the board's pleasure, take a vote. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to um, move or defer this agenda item to next month. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to move board business uh, number five, uh, A, $1,000 for community outreach to next month. Oh, sorry. Second. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. I just wanted to make sure we weren't recessing next month. Yes, to next month. And uh, we have a second from board member Tector. Uh, we will go ahead and take a roll call vote. I'll give it to Je Jeffrey. Okay, again, I'm going to go down the list of the attendance sheet, just in this order. Chair DeCourt. Uh, Naomi Hanohano. Uh, Malia, Gus, I'm not too sure if you're still on with us, if you are. Hi. Thank you. Tector? Yes. Myers? Yes. Edward Hanohano? And Corona? That concludes the roll call vote with with seven ayes, no nays, zero abstentions, and of course the two that are still absent. Okay, very good. Uh, next on our agenda is item is announcements. Uh, next regular board meeting will be Tuesday, November twenty first, twenty twenty three, seven p.m. at the Nanakuli Public Library via WebEx platform. Um, at this time, uh, this concludes our agenda. We will go ahead. It's nine oh nine p.m. We will go ahead and adjourn.